In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a super simple game show buzzer where all of these controllers are completely wireless and get fantastic battery life. What happens is when the person who is asking the questions hits the A button, then they arm all of these buzzers. And at this point, if someone were to buzz in early, they would be disqualified. So the green button is disqualified. Now, once you press the B button as the quiz master, all of these things are really armed. Now at this point, any of these three can buzz in. If the blue guy buzzes in and he gets it right, you can easily reset it and turn everything back on. But if he gets it wrong, you can hit the C button and that will enable either the yellow or the red to buzz in. Yellow buzz in, they answer the question and you can reset the whole thing. So that's how it works. If you want to see how to make it, stick around. Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. It is 5.30 in the morning here and uh, I normally start work around 4 and I'm waiting on a client to call me back and I sort of had this idea. I was one of those kids that grew up watching a lot of game shows and just my other calling in life would be to be a game show host and so I sort of had an idea about making a game show buzzer system where all the buzzers were wireless and obviously I could use something just like give a kid every kid one of these things but I think it'd be kind of cool to have something like this where there's like a button on one of these little uh, boxes and I showed in my raid my lab video for IR and RF that you could take apart one of these things and kind of hack it but I have a bunch of these that I really have no plans for so what I was kind of thinking is that let me pull this cover off here what I was kind of thinking I could do, and this is not a planned video, but what I was kind of thinking I could do is open up one of these things and pull this out. And this runs on a little 12 volt battery. And it'd be really easy to tap into these buttons and basically make this work in place on one of those buttons. And then what I was looking at is that, oh, this might be too big here. Let's try it, come on, okay. So what I was looking at was that on these little project boxes, this thing isn't going to fit. The battery would stick out on this side. But what I could do is desolder these stiff battery wires and maybe kind of swipe the battery box out of this thing. And that would allow me to, to get it into a form factor that looks a little bit more like a standalone game show type thing. And so... I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea if this is going to work. I have no idea if there's going to be any ending to this video, but I'm going to give it a shot and maybe I'll come up with something cool. Okay, so let me show you what I came up with. Um, I've got three of them together and I've got a fourth one over here ready to go. Uh, but basically what I did was I pulled apart one of these switches and the circuit board in here just pops right out. And so basically what I did is I desoldered the negative and positive uh, battery clips over here. And I set those aside because I needed them. And then what I did was cut this little battery holder out right here. And I actually just used tin snips. Uh, I was going to use a Dremel, but it cut fine with tin snips and worked out really well. And so then I put the battery terminals back in and then um, hot glued them down. So... Basically, if you come over here and look at this, well, I'll bring this to you. Um, what I have here is the battery terminal sitting here. I put a little bit of glue just to stop the battery from popping out. It peels right off. It's easy to, to change it if you need to. But I've got the positive and the negative wire, and the glue is kind of holding it so that um, the battery sits exactly in the center. This battery can move a little bit more than I'd like it to, so I have it just sitting right there in the middle. And then um, it comes over here, and I'm connected to the positive and the negative on the battery. And then what I did is I just soldered right to the two side terminals of this switch here. And because I was a little worried, these batteries will last for a year plus, um, maybe even two years. I have these all over my house in these switches, and I've never changed a battery yet. So I'm expecting these batteries to last a really long time. But basically what I, I didn't want is to have a wire push down on these things and just drain the battery so i put some hot glue on it and one of the neat things is this thing has an led inside and so you can see you know if you're able to push down this then you know you don't have enough glue on there and then it's just a matter of getting this wire out of the way because 
there's not a lot of room for that switch to sit in there. So I kind of get the wire out of the way and then tuck it in and pop it together. And when all said and done, you've got four completely wireless transmitters that are going to give you unique 433 megahertz signals. So let's see what we're going to do with those next. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is get over to the computer and we want to figure out what 433 megahertz codes these things are putting out. And so in my Raid My Lab episode 009, in the description of that video, I have the source code on how to make a universal receiver for infrared and RF. And so we're going to use that right now. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to push the red button and I'm going to see that I've got this code up here. So I'm going to copy this. And this is the red one, so let me come in here. I'm just going to say uh, this is red, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the yellow. And grab that. So you get the idea. I pushed all the buttons, I recorded their values, and just saved them over here. And now we're going to go to the code itself. The first thing I did was I imported two libraries that were available in the Arduino library manager. One is RC switch that will deal with the 433 megahertz stuff. And then the other one's one I just kind of stumbled across this morning called cute buzzer sounds. And it just has some pre-made little buzzer sounds. So uh, you install those from the library manager. And then we have four LEDs and these colors happen to be the same ones of the little buttons that people can buzz in with. And then straight from this example, I'm just grabbing define buzzer pin 7, which is where my buzzer's plugged in. Then to make it simple, what I've done is I have stored whether or not each of these colors, red, green, yellow, or blue, is available to buzz in. So in other words, if you've already buzzed in, you can't again. So if you're 0, then you're not available to buzz in. If you're 1, then you are available to buzz in. And we're just storing that here. Uh, so then we have the idea of state and so there's a couple different modes that this thing can be in and where we start off with negative one is booted and basically at that point no LEDs are on nothing can really happen. Uh, state one is when you're asking the question then uh, basically at that point they have to listen. If the person buzzes in early they're locked out and won't be able to answer the question at all. And then state two is anybody who is available, anybody who's available on here can buzz in now once they've buzzed in then you can decide do we let everybody try again or do we only want the people who haven't been locked out yet so what we're going to do we've got these two things here that we're getting the 433 megahertz stuff set up we're going to start our serial monitor and set up the buzzer pin and then i like to print booted on the serial monitor just so that i know the thing is booted and we're going to play a little sound through the speaker so we can tell that that's connected and then we're going to get set up with the 433 megahertz and set all the LEDs as output. So pretty straightforward. Now at this point, if you wanted to comment in this little section here, or I guess just this line here, you would hear all the different sound samples that are available. So if you want to customize these sounds, it'll print out on the serial monitor which sound it's playing. So if you scroll all the way down the bottom, you can see it's going to print the word confused and then print the confused sound or play the confused sound, delay for half a second and print the fart sound. So uh, those are all available. I took the time to type those out for you so you don't have to do it. Uh, so normally you would keep that commented out. Then this section here, this if my switch is available means is this thing recording a 433 megahertz signal. If it is, then get the value of it. And now in this situation, we have it set up where you can debug it and you can see exactly what it receives. Uh, normally you're fine to just keep that commented out, but that's basically the code of my universal receiver just sitting right there for kind of diagnostic purposes. So now what we have is this top section deals with the little keychain that the teacher or the game leader has. And basically what's going to happen is if you press the A button, it's going to put the game into, uh, and I guess I have those states off, state zero. So I guess we can modify this up here real quick. So state zero is asking questions and state one is uh, available so anybody can buzz in. So basically what it's going to do, if you push the A button on the remote, it's going to reset everything and allow all these people to be available and all their LEDs to be high. It's going to put it in state zero and it's going to play a little sound in the monitor so that everybody knows you're getting ready to ask a question. 
and uh, and then we've got a serial print so we know what's going on. So at that point, what's going to happen is you'll read the question and then you'll press the B button on your little remote and the B button will put it into state one and state one is what's required for people to legitimately buzz in. So they're going to hear the sound and after they hear that sound, they can buzz in and then uh, we'll come back to this button C in a second. But so what's going to happen here is if state is zero, which means that you're in the process of reading the question, if somebody buzzes in red, yellow, blue, or green, then what it's going to do is it's going to play the fart sound and it's going to make them not available and turn their LED off. And then so that's going to happen regardless of which one of these people. So if you're reading the question, somebody buzzes in early, then they're disqualified from that question. And so you can see this whole thing is wrapped in this if statement. But once you hit the B button, then you enter state one. And state one is basically letting, if somebody buzzes in, then what it's going to do is it's going to play a different sound. It's going to mark them as unavailable because you can only buzz in once. It's going to play a different sound and it's going to turn their LED off for a tenth of a second. And that's just for when they're the last person, you can't really tell if they buzz in because their LED would be the only one on. So it's just blinking that for a quick second or a tenth of a second. And then it turns off all the other LEDs. So in other words, if red buzzes in, then red is on and all the other LEDs are off and then it puts it into state two. And so that's going to happen regardless of which one you are. Now the teacher or the leader has a, a few options at that point. If they answer the question right, then they would hit the A button and they go back to state zero, which allows them to ask a new question, turns on all the LEDs, or they can hit the C button and we'll look here in a second. So we're going to scroll up here. If they hit the C button, then what happens is it's going to go through here and check is red available. So in other words, was red disqualified for buzzing in early or have they already answered? If they are available, turn their LED back on. If not, then we're going to make sure it's off. And same thing for all four of them. So yellow, blue, green. So basically, if you hit the A button, everybody is available again. If you hit the C button, only people who haven't tried to answer are available. And then it's going to put you back into state one and play uh, a sound. So again, it, it's a little bit of a, of a long explanation, but I want you to know that's all the code does. So let me show you how it all works. All right. So what I did with the Arduino is super simple. I took this key studio buzzer from my 37 and one sensor kit and connected this to pin seven. I connected these four LEDs, which I decided to laser print a little box. It's obviously completely not necessary, but uh, I took these four LEDs and connected them to the four pins right here, made sure that all the grounds are together, and then connected this. Uh, my 433 megahertz receiver went into pin three, I think, uh, two. And that's actually pretty important. When you do this 433 megahertz thing, you want it to go in an interrupt pin. And so just give me a little heads up on that. So the last thing I wanted to do was to make something to put all this in and uh, I showed in my Raid My Lab enclosures video that these things are between $199 and $299 at Direct Tools. And so basically I took one of these things and I didn't do the neatest job with the foam but I stripped out most of the foam in this thing and the main thing I was worried about was these buttons being pressed in when the thing was in storage. So I made little slots that the buttons can go down and these things fit in here relatively tightly and so I can just pop these in and then you take this and you put this up here and then it's written in here for the power cord but you basically want to put the power cord this way so that you're not putting a lot of pressure on that and then you can drop the little remote right down there and shut it up and you have a nice neat travel package and it goes nicely with my other one that I have and this one is made more for games that require a lot of slapping and and where you have people running across the room like a you know action packed type games this thing lights up the color of the buzzer and I wanted to make this one a little bit more accessible so when you look at this you can actually see how the Arduino is set up and how all the buttons are connected and there's a 433 remote for that and this whole thing is powered by a battery connector also so as a pair they're a pretty cool set so that is the wireless game show buzzer. Hope you liked it. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe, hit that bell, comment, 
The code will be available in the description of this video with maybe a few of the parts from the shopping list. Have a great day and thanks for watching.